Hello and welcome to a webinar hosted by Swoop. My name is Ian Hawkins and I'm going to be moderating this discussion. Uh, a couple of little bits of housekeeping before we get underway. First of all, if you have any tech problems whatsoever, drop a note in the chat and one of my colleagues will be on hand to make sure that we are audible and visible as soon as possible. This is being recorded, so it will be available to share and enjoy afterwards. Uh, so if you do have any tech problems, you can catch up later and in your own time. And we'd be delighted if you could send it on to anyone who might find it useful. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can put those in the Q&A box and we will get to as many of them as we possibly can. So that is the housekeeping out of the way. Let's get down to business in a very literal way. First of all, unfortunately, Kieran and Andrea have been summoned away. They've got a, an emergency meeting that's had to happen. Uh, so they send their apologies. Andrea is going to try and come back to us if she possibly can. But they are ably represented by the wonderful Rhys Cunner, who is uh, our head of unsecured finance here at Swoop. So let's get on with our discussion because we have so much to get through. Life after RLS. Thousands of businesses took advantage of government schemes to borrow money much more easily through the COVID pandemic. As the last of the RLS schemes is officially over, businesses still have unmet funding needs. So what options are still out there? Rhys, question for you. You're head of unsecured funding here at Swoop. So what proportion of loans were actually approved under that RLS scheme? Um, in terms of the application to approval, is that is that right? In? Yeah. OK, yeah. so um, it's a bit of a difficult one because the way that we work in, in Swoop is we are a, uh, a tech company. And what we don't want to do is take any clients um, down the road where we feel that they're not going to effectively have a, a positive end result. So quite a lot of the businesses that um, signed up to Swoop or were, were referred um, into Swoop, we actually wouldn't allow them to process with an application if they didn't meet the criteria. So I think there's a very big difference in terms of your question, in terms of who signed actually up to Swoop um, during the, the the RLS coverage or the government scheme um, coverage that, that that started back with actually um, bounce back loans, C bills loans and then the recovery loan scheme which kind of followed on from that. So I suppose that the, the beauty of of kind of the Swoop um, tech platform prevented a lot of clients moving forward with applications that didn't meet the criteria. So um, I suppose in terms of the percentages that were actually coming through, so once they'd initially packed, um, passed the eligibility check, we're, we're probably in the region about 50 to 55% um, in terms of what was then approved at bank level or, or lender level. Now, this can do, or this can be down to um, it actually being prevented at a, a stage where the lender looks at it and there is an error in, in the application, potentially there's the wrong incorporation date, etc. cetera. Um, but in terms of the um, percentage that was then moved forward from um, an acceptance to, to then drawing down, et cetera, or you know, from the acceptance was pretty actually high. Now, everyone, and I suppose that this, this webinar today is kind of the life after kind of RLS. Now, even during RLS, it, it wasn't necessarily the best product for every business, right? So the what we would tend to do is look at all options across the market for the client. So just because they weren't approved for the recovery loan scheme, um, due to the criteria, it doesn't mean that there weren't options available for them, if that makes sense. Here. Sure. I mean, that's that's kind of behind my question is to say that uh, although people have been, uh, we talked about RLS an awful lot, and I just wanted to make sure that we all know that it's it's not the the be all and the end all, and that you know about half of people were doing doing perfectly good deals that were not under RLS. So that's that's the main reason. But just very quickly, why was RLS so popular? Because it's been the big story for a long time. Yeah, I mean, many lending institutions now, um, whether that is bank or the alternative funding market, before, let, I'm going to say, kind of the, the coronavirus crisis that, that kind of hit us, um, personal guarantees was the norm, right? Unless you could put up some form of security, whether that was an asset, whether that was uh, even an invoice potentially, or a bricks and mortar building, 
more than likely lenders are in the market at, at the stage before the pandemic was actually requesting for a, a personal guarantee. Now, for anyone on the call that doesn't kind of know what a personal guarantee is, it's you, you effect, a set or a director's guarantee, it can be referred to. You're effectively basically saying that if my company cannot repay the loan that I'm going to be liable for for that facility in place. So the main, I suppose, attraction to the recovery loan scheme and the previous schemes on, you know, that we've experienced um, since the pandemic is the government were actually stepping in up to a certain level um, and guaranteeing the banks that if that business wasn't to fulfill its promise of repaying um, the loan back and default, that the bank would ultimately pay up to um, a percentage um, throughout all the schemes and, and would actually cover the, the the directors on that sense. So that was the main attraction for it. Mm-hmm. Um, other other kind of, um, I suppose, why it was so popular and, and why it was as attractive for business owners that it was fairly well publicised and um, many of the mainstream markets um, that were out there weren't necessarily being as proactive with their own clients for this. And the wording from the British Business Bank was perceived um, <laughs> in a way that it would depend how the lender would interpret it. So the, it meant that many lenders were joining these schemes, which previously have never joined lender schemes like this before. Mm-hmm. So it actually opened up the competition um, across a, a, across the, the wider market for alternative lenders to start promoting this that previously hadn't um done done before okay lovely thanks Chris. and hello to andrea you managed to come out of your meeting so thank you very much sorry <laughs> that's all right you, we will uh, what i'll do is i'll drop you in the deep end with an audience question because there's a, there's a there's a slap on the wrist for turning up late so this is uh, our audience member sanjay who says do we believe that funding for smes will be difficult without the support of the government since c bills and rls have ended um Reese has just said that about half of the loans that were being given out, certainly through Swoop, were, were non-RLS anyway. So do you think that it's that funding is going to be more difficult in the future? I mean, immediately? No. No. Uh, I actually think in some cases it'll be a faster turnarounds and, and smoother. Uh, because if you think about it, uh, a lender has their own criteria. And then on top of their own criteria, they have to meet certain specific British Business Bank criteria because if they don't and the, there's a default on the loan, when they go back to government to, to make their claim, uh, they will be going through that with a fine tooth comb to make sure they follow the rules. So in a lot of cases, um, it actually led to a slowdown of loans being approved. Um, so now they're back to uh, having their own liquidity back to the private sector markets. So we're, we're already seeing um, smoother turnarounds. Obviously, there was a backlog post or less, but that's beginning to smooth out now. Um, also, because of the government schemes, on the one hand, they help. Uh, but on the other hand, if you are in this space, if you're a lender, a lot of the time it's very hard to compete with the government. So, um, so they would all retreat. So there was, in some cases, less liquidity in the market because of the government schemes. Um, so I think having a normalized market is much healthier uh, for SMEs to be able to go and get funding. And I suppose the last point I would make is, you know, loans are one part of the the discussion, but there is still government support in the form of grants. Um, so, you know, wherever you are based in the, in the country, um, there is a local growth hub uh, that is there specifically to support businesses within your region. Um, we're expecting further funding to be released because it took this government three years longer than they said it would uh, to introduce the UK version of grant funding, you know, replacing the European funding. Thankfully, we're through that now. So we're starting to um, see and expect to see more grant funding coming from what's known as the Shared Prosperity Fund, which is the the government program. So don't always think funding equals loans. In in most cases, it will be good to have that working capital or longer term uh, loan. But there are other options out there, too. As you've brought up the subject of grants, I've got a question here from Adam, who says, are there any grants or funding that a company serving the community in sport for children might be entitled to. That seems a bit specific. What would you say, the the local growth hub is ideal for that? 
Yes, the local growth hub is definitely um, an ideal place uh, to, to look for that. And, you know, if they don't have something specifically, they may then point you in the direction of your local council. So councils also have other funding for community based projects. So they will be able to give you that guidance on whether uh, it's coming from the council whether it's coming from their growth hub grant funds or, or whether right now there isn't anything available. So you can get a quick answer that way. Sure. Uh, Rhys, you look like you might want to be able to jump in there or something. Um, no, no, Ian. No, no okay. No, no. <laughs> Good. Oh, well, that's, that's wishful thinking on my part because I've just remembered that I, I read um, the 100, uh, top 100 franchises in, in Britain and there were lots and lots of franchises that were delivering sports coaching and education to children so that is quite a, a, a big area so it's the kind of kind of business that, that might well attract some some funding one way or another um right we've had the positive news i'm gonna let you answer this one reese which is uh which is a bit more negative it's not my words it's peter who says how does a small business avoid the his words multitude of parasites claiming to provide finance but in fact want to broker business uh what do you think are, are there are there charlatans and shysters out there Reese? um i think i think it goes down to the specialists within the market so hmm. um at, at, within sweet specifically i can't speak about you know other other lenders or potentially intermediaries but i suppose it's sweet, the way that it's been designed by um the founders is that we, we are a jack of all trades and we, we are a marketplace for smes and the tech company but Behind that are individuals who've developed each specialism within the market. So, for example, um, my, my remit with, is within the unsecured and asset finance. I've got colleagues across the board who look at um, only equity and only commercial mortgages because the market is so big within, individ within the individual specialism that, that we focus in or have a team within, um, yeah. let's say. So I would say that potentially um, they may be speaking with the wrong people and people who do claim to be the um the jack of all trades potentially aren't and this is where some people can get you know bad names within the market by pretending to do so so one thing i would say is do do your research look at you know the reviews etc and also reach out to your network you know many business owners that are in the network or um advisors will have a good level of understanding of where they previously advised for businesses. Um, we get quite a lot of, well, a lot of um, businesses coming into ourselves, which are actually word of mouth and are actually people who we've been dealing with for a number of years who have then referred their friends in, their family, et cetera. So I think that that's, that's also kind of a given of, of do your research and making sure that whoever you're speaking to understands the immediate need for the business um, and not just claim to be. Andrea, I can feel that you're, you are sensing the fear behind this question and you want to jump in. Oh, uh, yeah, I think, um, look, it's absolutely right. The, the market does have exactly as described on the tin there by Peter. Um, this was actually one of the reasons we started Scoop. I mean, the marketplace is huge. There are hundreds of non-bank lenders. There's all of the different products within the high street banks themselves. There's hundreds of grants out there. Investment might be the right route for your business rather than, rather than debt, or it could be a combination of all three to reduce the cost of capital. If you think about it, if I'm on my own or there's two or three of us sitting in an office, you can't keep up with the breadth of products. And so normally most people are good at one form of finance, as Reese has pointed out, and they'll try and push you down that way to get the business, as you've just described. It's why we won the Banking Competition Remedies Fund Award, because they realized this is tough to build out the entire market network and to deliver that in a way that's, that's scalable to all SMEs in the UK. Um, and so that's why we exist. So I get what Peter's saying. Uh, you know, when I was an accountant myself and I would use brokers, I had exactly the same experience. So um, uh, they do exist, unfortunately. Yeah. OK, let's move on, because there's lots of there's a couple of questions that have come in on the theme of cash flow. We've got um, let's have a look. Ralph, who says uh, which financier 
best support small but dynamic companies with mas massive potential but temporarily patchy cash flow. Uh, and Michael, who says, I'm a new business and I've run out of money, so I can't get my business to the next level. These feel like they're, they're part of the same part of the same yeah. picture, aren't they? I'll do the new business one and then I'll let Reese um, go through the different different forms of cash flow. If you are a new business and you are uh, trading for less than two years, trading, not when you registered your business. So if you've made your first commercial sale and it's less than two years, you could be eligible for the uh, British Business Bank startup loan. Um, we uh, can help you uh, apply for that, make sure you're ready for the application. And, and, and then we have a, a referral relationship with the bank where we can fast track applications. Um, that you can raise up to uh, 25,000 pounds per founder of the business or per manager of the business. And it is uh, repayable over six years. Uh, the first six months you get a capital payment holiday. So you're only paying uh, the interest. And the idea behind that is, is there a acknowledging when you start a business it is really hard to get it off the ground and you will have cash flow issues and you might have stops and starts and so that is the purpose of that loan they won't base it on um, the revenues of the business they will base it on you personally and the way that they're making their decision there is if the business can't afford to repay the loan in the future are you someone who would be able to go and generate revenue elsewhere, whether that's through a job or trading something else? Um, and so that's one of the, the government interventions that are there for exactly the use case that uh, that we've just heard. Um, Reese, maybe you want to speak more into the, the cash flow um, products that we have. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, in terms of the cash flow, when uh, repeat, can you just repeat that question in, in terms of the cash flow, just to make sure I answer it? So there's, there's a couple here. There's one from Ralph who says, which financier best supports small but dynamic companies with massive potential but temporarily patchy cash flow? And yeah. the other one, which is from Michael, who says, I'm a new business. I've run out of money, so I can't get my business to the next level. Okay, so we, in, in terms of the, the, first, the first business, the first question, it would be making sure that you are speaking with the right people to provide that product. As we've touched on before, um, people may put down separate um, areas of specialism of funding that may not be applicable to you, or you may have tried to reach out, but they may not have the, the breadth of panel and, and um, lenders or access to kind of other finance elements to, to support that. So what I would say is, is, is you know, pick, pick, speak, speak with Swoop is, is what I would say, if I'm honest. Yeah, um, I, I think just, sorry, just to, to put in, but just to give you a flavor of, you know, you're probably sitting there and thinking, well, my cash flows aren't aren't at a significant enough level where lenders will be interested in me. And, and the bottom line is the market is so niche now with so many different products that, you know, we've lenders who will look at um, advancing uh, cash flow facilities uh, from 500 pounds upwards. So if you're having, if it's because you've got, you know, seasonal, um, fluctuations in your in your revenues coming in if it's that you say well actually I'm only doing a thousand pounds a month or something like that and I'm not I'm not interesting there are there are cash flow products out there uh, where they'll advance you a facility based on your last three months revenue and then they'll take a clip off so as you earn they then take a sweep off the off the revenues coming in, so it can be quite flexible as well if you're at the, those early stages of, um, you know, building, building. Oh, have a bad month, building, building. We all have them, um, and there there are those types of products um, out there. I think that's. Would you agree, Reese? Would would those be the the, the yeah, different options it, when you're super young? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. It's also. It, it, there's two there's two ways it's more one on the edu education so for example when you are experiencing cash flow difficulty it's also understanding if there are options there but also how you can get to options so by speaking with someone who's within that market let's say they will be able to say that if you hit your, or if you hit a certain level of trading months with a certain level of income as a guideline you mentioned um the, the future revenue products you know it's all about the awareness to then gear up to that so hopefully at the start of any business you know when you are more than likely to qualify for certain products as well so 
it's just one knowing that there's products there. Many, many clients, many SMEs within, within the market usually turn to two people, either their accountant or their bank. And the banks, the high street banks necessarily have pulled out of the, the smaller startup market. We're starting to see them coming back, but there's, they can't turn to their or necessarily their um, bank manager potentially as they could have done. 10 years ago, let, let's say, or, or even longer. So it's kind of just understanding the products. Now, one thing that's come that's come out over the last five years since I've been involved in kind of brokering is there's more lenders coming through and there's more at startup stages and there's more at earlier. So they're actually dropping their criteria for SMEs because there is a clear need within the market to support cash flow at these early stages. Um, and, and develop the, the SME market further. So there are plenty of options that are there. It's just understanding which option is, is available at that moment. And if it's not, then how can we bridge that gap? And whether that is looking at potential grant funding, whether that it is looking at an alternative um, product that potentially could be available that potentially business owners aren't aware of. Okay, thank you, Reese. There's a couple of other uh a couple of other comments that have come in that are, are speaking to that point. So there's Peter who's looking to get £22,000 uh, funding. Uh, and there is somebody else, actually, there's somebody else asking about cosmetic product manufacturing. So British Business Bank is probably the best place for them to go, isn't it? No, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Do not go to the British. You know, the British Business Bank is not a lender. It's not actually a bank. It's Sorry, a misnomer I'm, of a name. I, I um, just... They are a development agency, essentially. Uh, what they do is they fund other lenders to be able to distribute to the market. Um, so you'll get lost if you go to the British Business Bank website. Um, so what what I would say for the 22,000, um, that one, as I say, if you're if you're less than two years trading, the startup loan would be a perfect example there. Um, if it's twenty two thousand and you're already generating revenues, um, it could be that some of that could come from a cash flow facility. So what I'll tell you is the pluses of non British business bank lending is it's a lot faster. So so if speed is an issue for you, it may be that we need to look at the um, the cash flow lenders. First of all, um, the startup loan can take somewhere between, you know, approximately six weeks to turn around. Now, we, we work with businesses to get them a bit more ready. So everything's in place. We can give you your checklist just so that you're putting in a strong application and they're not wasting more time coming back and forth with you. Um, so think of two things. One is the startup loan, great for that sort of bit of capital, long term, you can make repayments after the six months. Cash flow is speed, wanting to get your revenues to the next stage. Grants also, I will say, don't be thinking fast turnaround. Um, grants are, you know, it's government money. They have to make sure they're spending the taxpayers' money correctly. Um, and also the last point on grants is a lot of the time, sometimes they have vouchers and they just give you the vouchers, but a lot of the time it's matched funding. So if you're, let's say you want to build a website or uh, the cosmetics manufacturing plant there, they might have to invest in plant and equipment. Uh, they might have to invest in a lease on that on that factory. So how that would work is we would look at the grant side of it as part of the overall project cost that you have. What we would do is look at where do we get the the, the private sector money. So is that coming from the bank? Is it asset finance? Um, and then what we do is we work with the grant agents and we say, here's a cosmetics manufacturing plant. They're going to be creating jobs. We look at how many jobs you'd be creating. We work out what the level of capital grant is we could get from the, from the grant agency as well. So it's always forms part of your, of your capital requirement, but a grant, for, a grant agency will never give you a hundred percent of your, of your financial need. Okay, thank you very much. I, I meant startup loan, but thank you for keeping me honest, Andrea. Um, <laughs> there's a, a question from Taiwo, who says, how do you understand the lender's criteria to find where, where you best fit in? Well, that's what Swoop uh, does. Yeah, uh. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, uh, that's an open door for you, for you Reese, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we the, the way that we develop our tech is up to speed, real information from the lender's criteria. So, um, when a SME or a business owner signs up to, to Swoop, um, 
they have the options, we collate the data and then we can point them um, into the right direction. Now, once that then comes through effectively into the platform, um, we we have a criteria which which meets the needs of the lenders. So you're not necessarily shown products that you aren't eligible for. So quite a few of the lenders, um, well, pretty much every lender in the market has a credit policy. And within that credit policy, it can be anywhere from minimum monthly turnover, um, years trading, whether or not you're a homeowner, what is it you're looking to purchase? And also the biggest one that kind of goes um, under the carpet is what sector is the business and actually understanding the needs of that business, whether you're a recruitment firm and you're, um, you're paid within 30, 60 or 90 days, there's products out there to advance that funding, whether you are a, a retail shop um, who is looking to purchase stock for maybe summertime in a, in a tourist place, you know, it's understanding the sector, the turnover, you know, the criteria of the lenders, which then allows any SME to unlock the potential funders that are are there to support the, the business as it as it looks for growth um, or or for cash flow needs. Um, does that answer your question, Ian? I, I, I think. So. Yeah, sorry, Ian, sorry, just just wanted to add to that also exactly what we said. You you individually sitting there are thinking, do I meet those criteria? That's a lot of work, first of all, to go up and figure that out. Also, lenders change their criteria. It doesn't, it's not a static thing. Um, they might get their, their loan book, might suddenly have large exposure in construction. And so they say, actually, our credit appetite for further construction loans is not there. So, so the criteria change, which is why we have to keep up with that. But a really crucial point is, don't ever go and apply directly to multiple lenders and then see what returns back because you're hitting your credit score every time you apply directly. The nice thing about coming via a, a platform like Swoop is we are not submitting your loan application until we are have a very high percentage of, of confidence that you're going to get that. So a lot of the time we get businesses who come to us to say, I've tried to go and get the loan myself. I've had it, and, and we we then realize their credit score has been negatively impacted. Um, so whatever you do, don't go and apply directly multi, to, to multiple lenders. Um, at least get you know further further advanced in your application and be be lender ready uh, coming through a platform like Swoop. Okay, there's, there's a question here from Adrian who says, do you have a health sector specialist lending team? So it's it's less that and more I think about what. It's what the lenders are prepared to lend on, isn't it, Reese? Yeah, I'll I'll pick this one up. So sure. um, we have, so it's a funny one because we have a wide range of expertise across the team. So we have, um, uh, let's say, funding managers and senior funding managers within across all teams that actually have worked in banks previously, which specialise within the healthcare sector, within the leisure and hospitality, the retail as well. So to answer the question, yes, we do, but we also have. Um, niche specialists within pharmacy, dental, um, care home, you know, we, we have the the expertise across the board in, in pretty much every every sector, I would say, within within the UK. Okay. And across and across uh, the equity um, and grants team as well, because healthcare is a very hot yeah. uh, sector in, in equity investment at the moment too. Okay, um, I've got a question here, which is, boys, do you think that when the bank says no, a lot of people give up? I mean, Andrea, you talk about people going off to, to make as applications across as many, as many lenders as they can. Do you think that there is an element of, I'll go to my bank first? Uh, it used to be, um, but I guess just to give people a sort of an industry insight so that they don't feel they're you know intimidated by the process or feel they're being rejected because of their mm. business um we all remember the bounce back loans and the banks uh, alone nobody else distributed bounce back loans other than the banks um and some non-for-profit organizations so the banks are heavily indebted uh, their balance sheets have a lot of bounce back loans on there and so they're not going to have a huge appetite in this space now for this for the sort of 50,000 and below unsecured lending. So that's why we should 
we're quite happy that the UK has the healthiest non-bank lending market in the world outside the US. Um, so, and, and also banks are, in fairness to them, some banks are, are now digitized. Um, you know, you've got the new entrants who are more digitized. They just don't have the, the breadth on and depth of products that the traditional banks do. But we're still seeing very long turnaround times uh, from the traditional high street banks, uh, even for low level uh, loans, you know, the sub 50,000. So, yeah, I mean, it's really hard getting a, a loan from a bank and, and don't feel like if you get a no or it's taking forever, don't feel that is personal to your business and that's a reflection on your business. It's a reflection of where the industry is at coming out of COVID. Before, and, and I, I, before I had let you take that, that on, Reese, I just want to flag something up that somebody said here. It's Gareth, who says he runs a small business, doing a million dollars in turnover in 2022, still can't get any financial support. So uh talk wow. us through that race <laughs> i don't know who you've been speaking to um <laughs> but there's definitely yeah, there's definitely support out there so um i would love to to kind of pick up with with you after this um if you would like to get in contact in and we can discuss that further but you should definitely be having some some support um across that as and i suppose something that that we um have that, that's unique in the market is we're overseas as well so it's mm. not that we would be trying to provide you facilities purely just in in the uk we have um obviously the, the european market which is our kind of hq over in in dublin and then we've got the the canadian office and the um, the Australian office as well, and I'm sure there's more places which Andrea has got on her globe that she's she's pointing towards over in that direction. But there's definitely support that we can we can support you with. So please do get in touch. There's interestingly there's somebody else, uh, Phil here, who says, are there any specialist lenders that provide cash flow facilities where the bulk of the invoicing is delivered by a UK company to the US market? High street banks all shy away from this criteria. Yeah. I think the fact that Gareth put his turnover in dollars might might speak to that as well. Andrea? Yes, yes, he's absolutely right. Uh, it's almost like the high street banks don't even recognize those invoices uh, because it's outside their, their jurisdiction. Um, and, and look, I'm, we shouldn't bash the banks. They are great when the product absolutely fits, um, but they're highly regulated. And so that's what, what constrains them as well as their, their credit appetite. Uh, but yes, there are, uh, we have lenders who will look at invoices in, in all jurisdictions, um, you know, trade finance products as well, if you're purchasing from other jurisdictions. So um, the, like the good news is the market is only expanding and, and, you know, financial institutions that are not banks have identified there are millions of businesses that reflect exactly what we just described here and the banks aren't serving them, so let's build a product that does. Um, so the answer is yes, there, there, there are um, options out there. Uh, uh, so, so Claire has just got in touch to say, does Swoop offer a phone call to discuss funding options? Yes. <laughs> Reese is just nodding. Yes. Andrea, yes. yes. <laughs> so the best thing for you to do, Claire, I think is just to sign up to Swoop and uh, what's, the, what, what's the next steps, having signed up to get somebody on the, on the phone? Yeah, they can pick a time themselves or um, one of the team will, will get in touch anyway, um, post post uh, registering. Um, feel free to take mine and Reese's email as well if you feel a connection to us on this on this webinar as well. OK, um, let's have a look through. Uh, there is, ah, Ethel says, what is the best route to take if, as an SME, you do not have good credit, but you need capital in order for the business to function? So this is a yeah. bit of a... Uh, I'll do the you, first bit. Um, yeah. I'll do the first bit on the good credit. Um, and you don't right now have good credit. Um, we will put you in touch with one of our uh, partners who will help improve your credit. So it's not a lost cause. Your credit score does not remain static for the next six years. There's plenty of ways that we can improve that. Um, so so do get in touch with us, and we will we will. Put you through our system of referring you to them then building your, your credit backup and opening up the options there are still options out there at least maybe you want to chat more into that in terms of um tough credit scores 
Yeah, in, in terms of the, the credit scores, credit scores, depending on which lenders, not every lender will use a, a credit score. So you may see, not going to name any names, but some big, huge fintech companies, which are lenders who would just kind of shut the doors on you. The, the beauty of when I suppose you're speaking with a specialist is as long as we know the background of the credit and we understand the um, what's, what's happened previously, um, typically that we can then guide you into other lenders which are more manual. And they understand, and this is where it's the offset of, um, do we try and wait three months or a month to increase your credit scores to potentially allow you to get into the more um, data-driven lenders? Or are we happy that you can actually go ahead today, tomorrow, to proceed with a... Um, uh, uh, let's say a provider, whether that's asset finance, invoice finance, a, a more you know commercial mortgage, a, an unsecured loan that actually fits the criteria for you as a, um, a a lender or a borrower, because there are lenders in there. It's just understand where they are and if you're happy with the terms that they would move across. Just because you are accepted for a loan does not mean that it's the best thing for your business it may mean to hold off because you don't need the cash flow right now to survive we'd always recommend that if that is the case in terms of some um you know with with a a, a damaged credit score or something that may have happened it could be a gen genuine reason um we see a, quite a lot of small um well, not so much here but in terms of where i've worked previously parking i finds that have a detrimental effect on any lending as a, as a business that, that oh it's a parking fine i forgot i didn't receive it i've moved house well that there's a reason behind it and as long as we know about this reason nine times out of ten we can either provide constructive feedback to say speak with um our affiliation of partners to try and increase that and remove it etc or provide something that is is what you're looking for so there's plenty of options there i wouldn't say just because something is low in terms of a scoring doesn't necessarily mean the door's shut okay i've got two questions here that seem to be again in the same in the same ballpark we've got noel who says are you able to do a financial assessment of smes to direct them to the right source of funding and ken says do you work with local advisors or introducers who help bring together the need and supporting financials to present a full package to you. Andrea, I can yes. see you nodding. Yes, we absolutely do work with advisors. It's actually part of how Sweet uh, grows. And uh, we have, we are actually partnered with the Institute of Chartered Accountants for England and Wales, because they saw that we had built a, a specific portal area for advisors to actually onboard their clients look at the funding options available to them, uh, use our software tools to package it up and it submits uh, directly to our teams. And then you watch the progress of that, uh, that deal that you're working on for your client um, while working with your dedicated um, uh, broker as well. So we love advisors. We firmly believe that if you marry swoop with advisors um that's probably the best experience for for smes too uh because they know you they're you they're you know you're the person they turn to because they don't have a bank manager anymore so uh, more than welcome to uh to join swoop and happy to follow up on that uh with an email after and and, and work you through how we onboard you as a as an advisor and introducer um and then the second question was on do we provide a financial assessment absolutely I mean, if you go on Sweep and just integrate your your um, your accounts, et cetera, the first phone call you get then will be more rich, detailed conversation because we'll already have done a, a financial assessment um, and we'll understand what the products that you've been matched to. You'll see the products yourself that you've been matched to. You'll see if there's a grant in your area that you're eligible for, et cetera. So your call will be a richer call with the, uh, with the team. Okay. Um I've got a question from Roger. This is for you, Reese. I think, and it's a little bit how long's a piece of string, but maybe maybe you can help. Roger says, "What interest rate should one consider reasonable in the current unsecured loan market?" Depends how much. Depends how long. Depends. Depends. It, it, it depends on it depends on many factors, right? So it's what's available at that time. So base rate, as we know, is is has increased and. Um, if you look at all the all the forecasted projections, that's only going one way. So um, 
any kind of interest rate that you're considering, is it fixed? Is it variable? Um, and also, the, the unsecured side, a lot of the unsecured markets, um, the, the, you can get a fee in an APR, uh, sorry, an interest in an APR, in a flat rate, an interest rate, etc. So it's actually understanding the fundamentals of that charge of credit. Now, the fact is, is if you're borrowing, let's just for an example, say, um, £10,000 and the interest rate is, say, 10% um, per annum on, on that side. What does that £10,000 mean to you as your business? So that £1,000 of interest, are you going to buy a product and make a 30 40% margin on that so you deduct it away from your costs? So what I would say is it's all comparable to the return on that lend that you're looking for. And within that, it could be that you only need cash flow for three months, but there's a greater benefit in the next 12 months of trading because you've got over that rough period of potentially slow invoices or um, a, a cash flow that was unforeseen. You could look at a five or six or seven year term facility and the interest rate is typically fixed at um, a more reasonable level. But it's all about one is the affordability of, of that, that loan. And, and we do those checks um, via ourselves. You know, we're all, we, we're all trained in terms of many of us have worked in banks previously. Many of us have taken um, chartered bal- um, banking qualifications, etc. So we, we understand that we never really want to put, we never want to put anyone in distress. So we wouldn't um, necessarily put a facility in place that we didn't think was suitable. So the interest rate itself, that question, we would need to know the, the individual circumstance of what you're being offered. And I'm more than happy. Um, I can put my, my email and Andrea's email into the channel here um, for, for anyone who wants to pick up separately. But reach out to, to, to myself or, or Andrea and we can kind of talk through the, the, the available options or the options that you've got on the table. That's not an issue. Great. Thanks, yeah, and, uh, sorry, just to add to that as well. Um, the younger you are, uh, the less credit history you have, the higher the interest rate is going to be at the beginning of your journey. Um, but don't see it as a permanent fixed rate. Um, every six months, as long as you've made those repayments and you're building up your credit history, that's where we look at, can we refinance to a better value product now? Or can we refinance to better value and also increase your facility? So, so it's always a constantly improving and moving situation the, the older your business gets and the further you go in your, in your journey. So that's another thing. When, when you're young and you're starting out, uh, you know, sometimes products seem expensive, but don't see it as a, a permanent state. Okay, we have a question from Parag here, and it's on the subject of franchises, which I, I know is a subject close to your heart, Andrea. So RLS was used by franchisers and banks to help arrange loans for franchisees that did not have enough security for the loan to purchase a franchise resale. First of all, can Swoop help with this situation? And secondly, will there be a replacement for RLS? Well, that's probably the easier question to answer. So is there going to be a replacement for RLS? Um, yes, I do believe there will be. Uh, I, I've said that every single time we've come to the end of this government program, I've always forecasted that there'll be another version of it coming soon. And that's been the case so far. Why do I say that? It's not that I'm some knowledgeable look into a, a, a glass ball and tell you this. It's because the RLS is actually uh, a, pretty much the same loan product that the government has offered for, gosh, over 20 years. Um, I've been around this market a long time as an accountant and then a corporate finance advisor. It started off with the initials SFLG, then it turned into EFFG, and then it turned into... The, the, the Siebel's, then it turned into RLS. They just give it a few different initials. They slightly tweak the terms of the loan and then it comes back onto the market. So the reason I'm quite bullish about it is 
they believe, government has believed over the last two decades that a product like this does have a place in the market and there is a need for it where entrepreneurs don't have the security um, to, to give to the banks um, to, to enable the lending. The good part about the last version of RLS is the government didn't just um, limit it to the high street banks. Uh, they've actually opened it out to non-bank lenders and that's really enabled the flow to improve massively. So yes, I'm, I'm expecting the terms won't be as beneficial as, as RLS. Um, they'll have a more sort of longer term version of it. So look, we're in consultations with the British Business Bank all the time. And just the signs are that something will, will emerge uh, over the next few months. Lovely. Rhys, what about, what about franchises? They, they want to buy a franchise. What, what options are out there for them? There's many options. So they just because any business is a franchise business doesn't necessarily mean that they are open to any particular products that's not out there. There will be certain banks that like franchise products. But again, it comes down to the sector. It comes down to the business behind it. If they've you know, um, been trading um, elsewhere, the management team, the security that's available. There are specific franchise products who we, we have them ourselves. So we have um, franchise relationships where we've actually been out to a number um, of, of lenders and, and arranged bespoke facilities. So we, we've, we've not only helped um, kind of franchise w within this, but we've helped them expand into Europe and kind of um, other, other continents as well that, that are there. So in terms of the availability of options, it's exactly the same as a normal business, but we have, many banks want to understand the previous trading history of other franchisees within within that and within any lending it comes down to again forecasts affordability management team it's the basics fundamentals of any um bank or lender lending money to someone they you are an investment to them and if they can show an evidence to their credit committee and their policy that um the franchisee who, who is taking on the uh, the, the lending can afford to repay it back, then they will move ahead with it. But again, it's knowing where to go and speaking to the right people and not wasting your time going through the process potentially um, of applying direct. So go and speak to a specialist and see what is there for franchise funding. Okay. Yeah, I think just, just on that, I, I kind of know why uh, the person's asking about franchise finance, probably because in the past, their franchisor would have said, you're, you're now an approved franchisee. And they would have typically had very strong relationships with some of the high street banks like HSBC, NatWest, et cetera. What's happened since COVID is the appetite of the normal franchise uh, lenders um, has reduced, significantly reduced. And so we've actually just become approved partners of the British Franchise Association, specifically for the reason that they were saying, franchisees are finding it more difficult to work out what their, their finance options are because the traditional route of just going to HSBC or NatWest is not really quite working out for them. Um, and so we, we now are going to be running um, webinars with the British Franchise Association and working out, showing all of the different finance options that are available to you. And that funding is available. We, we you know, we're global partners for one of the largest, uh, fastest growing franchises called F45. We do the same for Snap Printing, Baskin and Robbins, et cetera. So we know this space well. So don't be disheartened. That's probably the experience you've just had, which is what's led you to, to ask this question. As Ree said, we just break it down depending on whether it's asset finance or cash flow you need or you know, working capital facilities, whatever it is. Um, that's the way we would break down your your overarching finance need to whether it's to pay for your your, your license or or fit out a place. Okay, um, got a question here, which is uh, while we, while we're talking about you know the replacement of RLS, uh, someone says here there's talk of a recession coming down the line. What are the lessons from the last recession, and what should businesses do now to look after yeah. themselves? Yeah, um, well, one of the lessons. 
uh, was, uh, this is a different recession. So first of all, this is not a financial crisis. The last recession, because I know I was there, <laughs> I was helping my, my businesses um, through it. The last one was a financial crisis, which meant there was no liquidity in the market. Okay, so we went from literally making a phone call to Barclays Asset Finance, filling out a few application forms and suddenly we had the funding there to everyone shut up shop. Um, and that's when non-bank lending took off. So there, there wasn't all of these other options out there in the last financial crisis. You went to your bank, you probably went to Close Brothers or Bibi. There was like two other like kind of majors in the market. And then the answer was no. And that, that, that was a real um, pinch point for, for businesses. Secondly, the other part of the financial crisis was banks, where did they go first to shore up their balance sheets, to strengthen their balance sheets? They basically started recalling uh, small business loans because uh, they knew you wouldn't really have the, the ability to say, oh, hey, hang on, I'm going to take you to court. So that's what they did. This recession is, you know, if it's coming, you know, a version of it is coming. It's got to do with supply chain. It's got to do with uh, oil prices, etc. It, but the fundamentals, if your fundamentals of your business are still strong and you're still able to make sales, albeit they, you might have, especially B two C. So if you're consumer facing, yes, you might have a a, a drop. But the most important point I can tell anybody, because I went through this and I still go through it with, with our businesses, always look for cash when you're in a strong cash position, right? So if you're sitting on this and thinking, well, I'm, I'm okay, it's all looking good, or, you know, I'm just about getting by, et cetera, think about your finance needs in six months time. Don't think of it in six months time and say, oh God, oh no, I'm about to run out of cash. Some of you have already probably hit that point. And as I said, if you're younger, there's there's options out there. But the way to train yourself to be a, a good business owner from a financial perspective is always thinking past the six month line, looking at when's the strong, when do your bank statements look their strongest? Okay, because the first question they're gonna ask for is, can we see your last three to six month bank statements? And what banks do then, and we do this analysis with you as well, is they look at where there's credit tension and they look at to see, oh, is the trend going up where there's more credit tension this month than there was last month? And then they, they might still give you a facility. It'll be more expensive or it'll be them basically saying, we'll give you less than you asked for. So, you know, look at your bank statements like a lender we always say be money ready look at it like that and then know when to go based on what your needs are out of the, the six month window as well so th there are my and the reason I'm so passionate about this is I, I I've gone through the last financial crisis and and the pain points of it so we want to make sure that our our businesses stay alive and survive and grow there's always opportunities in recessions as well. So don't always see it as a, as a negative. Therese, you're a bright young thing. Have you, we've got anything to add to that? No, I think, I think it's, it's completely right. So I, I suppose I see um, both sides. So, so, so in, in my position and within Swoop, when we're dealing with clients, we see clients that need wages paying on Friday. And we see clients who know that there's going to be a shortfall in seven months time you always know that the tight deadlines are achievable with, with Swoop, nine times out of 10 providing, but it's it's not a nice position to be in when you've got wages that are due out at the end of the week and you're not sure if you can pay them. So in terms of the forecasting of your cash flow um, gap, make sure that you are ahead with it. And it's always better for me and um, the, the market to lend when things are good. When things are bad, it's higher interest typically because it's a more riskier position. And also, depending on how things can be, you're not guaranteed to get it. So what Andre has said, I would just reiterate that point to um, kind of look for lending before you actually need to press the button. But we are there in the, the event of some, some emergency cash flow um, that, that's needed. And, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of it that, that does happen and we do see a lot. That in fact, that Reese is, I know what Reese is referring to. We do have a lot of businesses that come and say, help. I don't know how I'm going to get to payroll at the end of the week or the end of the month. And we always have these close shaves with businesses, but 
we, we land it and then they say oh my god everyone's gone out for beers tonight and they've no idea what, what went on to, to hit payroll so uh, as I say if you're thinking you're the only one who was ever in that position you're not it's, it's a regular theme um, but if you're asking about how to prepare for a recession I would say start planning past the six month mark Yes, those are the stories you tell me that always make you feel slightly lightheaded when you when you get yes. to the punchline. I'm trying, right? Uh, we're into our last few minutes, so I'm just going to ask you both a couple of quick fire questions. First of all, uh, if you're a business looking for money, what are the top things you should do right now? I'm going to be ask you to be thinking in terms of a of a sound bite. So, you're looking for money. What should you be doing right now? Uh, Reese, sorry, I'll start, I'll start with you. Yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, Speak with a specialist, but make sure you're doing your research on who that specialist is. Make sure that you're, they are who they claim to be. Word of mouth, speak with people um, who have been in business previously. Um, speak with your accountant to see who they would recommend you to. But ultimately, yeah, Google's a great form to, to look at it. But again, it can be very misleading. So word of mouth and... Um, I would always say kind of speak with speak with Sweep if, if you are looking for that. But do your research would be the main um, point I, I would add to that. OK, do your research. Andrea, what would you like to add? Do your research and look at your last three months bank statements as if you were someone who's about to lend money to you and, 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 and look at where it might need tidying up, etc., Join Sweep because we're not a lender. We're not making judgment. We're there to help. We're on your side of the table. We know all the lenders. We know everything they're looking for, but we're on your side. So we can help you get ready or have a better three months ahead so that when that moment comes, you're in tip top shape. Okay. Last, last, last question then, because we're right up to the top of the hour now. Um, what would you say the main options for businesses are that need funding in the next six months? Andrea. It, it depends on the business, but um, like I hope if there's one takeaway you get from this is it's it, there are hundreds of different types of products out there for different sectors, different cash flow needs, longer term, shorter term. Um, there are grants available out there. There is investment there if you're a business looking to, to grow through equity. So just the key takeaway is don't think my bank said no, or I'm just going to ask my bank or I'm going to take out a credit card because that's really easy. Don't do that. These are bad decisions that we all make. Just join and at least see what your options are that are available. OK, same question to you, Rhys. If you looking for funding in the next six months, what are the what are the big options? Uh, again, I think I keep, I keep probably sound like Robert. Speak with a specialist because you may think that you may need a loan, okay? But that loan may not be the best course of borrowing. It could be a um, an advance on invoices. It could be an, an advance on future payments that actually fit the business right because with a loan product, you have fixed monthly repayments. During certain cycles of, of the business, and, and business owners will know this, there may be a time and period where they have to shut because it could be a tourism and um, within the winter months they don't get much traffic so potentially a, a fixed fee isn't great they may just want to look at a future revenue so when times are good they can they can effectively repay the loan in a shorter period and then look to an advanced borrowing when they need it again so again it's actually understanding the concept and the purpose of the borrowing and then let, let the specialists go go away and kind of come back with the options that are there. It could be match grant funding. It could be, as you say, um, investment into equity. It could be a typical unsecured and asset finance loan. There are plenty of products. And it's, you know, I wouldn't want to be a business owner trying to search through the web on different products because it's there's so many out there. And if you're not a specialist within that, then you you really may may not be doing your business justice in terms of what's available. Okay, we're at the top of the hour. Andrea, Reese, if you'd like to just pop your email address, uh, email addresses in the chat box for me so that people can reach out to you. The other alternative is that you can just sign up to Swoop and make an appointment with an advisor at some point. Uh, they will be able to help you through any of the questions you've got. If you've given us a question, thank you so much. That's really been useful and helpful to us to find out what's bothering you. And if we haven't got around to your question, I'm really sorry, but as you can hear, it's been really packed. We've done as many as we can. So. Thanks very much indeed for joining us today. Uh, 
and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your. I'm just looking at to see. Addresses Sorry, are mine's in. Andrea adds food funding. I, I don't have the chat box in front of me. You don't. That's that's fine. Andrea, it's awesome. Thank you, Reese. Well Thank done. You. So wherever you are, have a really enjoyable rest of your day. Thank you very much to uh, Reese and Andrea, and thank you very much to you for listening. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.